As you can see, it finally happened. My two-part concrete garage got delivered, which was certainly a spectacle for me. And in case you're completely confused right now, then let me tell you that I'm currently in the process of getting a house built. And the garage is basically part of the package where I can later park my car in. But as you can easily see, this garage does offer more space than a car requires, with measurements of 6x3 meters and 3x3 meters. And since I'm more or less forced to install mains power anyway, because the garage door requires it to function, I was thinking about what other electrical features I should include. I mean, stuff like outlets, switches and lights are obviously mandatory. But I also wanted to include a bit more advanced, but still super useful stuff, which you also might want to consider when it comes to your next electrical installation. So sit back and enjoy the show of how I spent 5 days inside a super cold garage with my friends to turn it into my ideal workshop. Let's get started! This video is sponsored by the Keysight Labs YouTube channel, which is actually not a boring corporate channel. Instead, the videos are all created by Keysight engineers to bring you test queue tips as well as tons of edutainment about all kinds of electronics. For example, they offer oscilloscope tutorials, a lab tour with Curious Mark or an exploration of 5G. And as I have heard, they are planning to do a big test queue giveaway soon over there. So make sure to subscribe today to not miss it. Now before doing any electrical work, I first needed some workbenches in there, which I wanted to position in two corners just like shown here in my planning. And since I've been using the workbenches in my lab for 5 years now and I'm very happy with their design, I decided to replicate them. And getting the wood material for the bench itself, as well as the supporting wood laths and the stands was really easy to do. But what was hard to do was moving the benches around all by myself, because they each weigh around 70 kg. So please, don't ask how I did it in the end. Before getting to that part though, I first had to cut wood laths to size with my newly acquired miter saw, which made things so much easier. Then I drilled a bunch of 4mm mounting holes into them, painted them all with wood stain and got my laser ready and in position to show a level line at a height of 84cm. At this height I held up the wood laths in order to mark the position of the mounting holes onto the wall so that I can drill into it, hammer in tons of plastic anchors and then use them with the help of screws to hold the wood laths into position. And as soon as this task was done, I moved on to the actual workbenches by simply cutting them to size, painting them with the same wood stain as before, securing the metal plates for the stands in two corners, attaching the stands and then finally lifting the workbenches into place before permanently securing them to the wood laths with some more metal brackets. All in all, pretty straightforward stuff but it still took me around two and a half days to pull it all off. But I think in the end it was definitely worth it. And with that out of the way, it was time to move on to the electrical installation. And to do that, I firstly started out with a simple outline of my garage. In there, I positioned the symbols for lamps, switches and outlets in a way that it would make sense when it comes to everyday usage. For example, a double switch right when I enter the garage, so that I can individually turn on or off the front or back lamp pairs. And speaking of lamps, I chose the exact same ones I used in a previous video, in which we upgraded the garage of my electrician buddy, so definitely check that out if you haven't yet. All the other standard components are also pretty much the same as before, because why change something if it works perfectly fine? But when it comes to new stuff, then we added 3 previously not shown awesome features. And let me begin right here with the way these outlets are mounted. Normally you would screw them into the wall and probably never move them around again. 
but I wanted flexibility and thus decided on the special wall ducts or Brüstungskanal how they are known in Germany. What is so special about them is that after mounting them to the wall you can get yourself special outlets that you can secure inside them super fast. And if you are not happy with their position or want to add more you can always easily move them around. And best of all you only have to hook up the first one to a proper mains voltage wire. Afterwards you can use such pre-made connector wires to daisy chain the rest together. And the last big plus point of those ducts is that there exist a few more useful electrical connectors you can mount inside them. Including an empty component box, meaning you can mount pretty much everything in there. Ok, so wall ducts are pretty awesome and I would highly recommend them. But what I think is also awesome would be a CEE socket here and two emergency stop switches, one here and one next to the entrance. In case you don't know, CEE sockets look like this and are basically normal outlets on steroids, because they can supply 3 phase mains power with 400 volts, which means I can hook up some really high power stuff later on. And I think emergency stop switches like this one are pretty self explanatory, meaning that if they get pushed I want them to immediately turn off the CEE sockets as well as the outlets on the workbench. The reasons for that are of course safety ones when working with bigger machines. And to accomplish that each stop switch comes with an integrated opener and closer, which in combination with this big 4 phase relay should be able to turn everything off. So with that in mind I created this flow diagram for the garage, in which you can see the relay and the two closer switches of the emergency stops. If either one gets pushed the relay activates and opens its contacts. But if you are professional right now you might say that this is not the correct way to do things. Because yes, even though this system does work in normal use cases like seen here, it does not come with a cable brake protection. By that I mean that if one wire to or from the closers break, then the relay will never activate and thus the emergency stops are pretty much useless. That is why you usually use a normally open relay and an opener to make such a system. Because there the relay is always turned on and if either a cable break happens or the opener gets pushed, the relay turns off. The only problem with that is that since the relay will always be turned on during normal operation, it would draw 63 watts of power continuously. And that is something I didn't want and thus instead use the halfway safe version. With that being said, the three big new electrical features of my garage should be clear and my flowchart with all the protection devices like safety fuses, ground fault circuit interrupters and circuit breakers was also done. And by the way, choosing the right protection components in combination with the required wires and their cross sections and ultimately wiring everything up correctly is definitely the reason why I would never recommend a non-professional to do such a job. Because if you mess something up you can not only hurt yourself but there is also a possibility that things not work or eventually even start a fire. And with that little disclaimer out of the way it was time to start the actual electrical installation. By doing that what probably everyone can do and that is attaching all the components to the walls or ceilings. Which includes the lamps, switches, outlets, CEE sockets, the sub distribution boxes, the wall ducts and finally the emergency stops. The next step was then to create a pipe system for the upcoming wires. And to keep the pipes in place we use such clips. So we went ahead and secured tons of those in front of not only the already existing components but also in front of the junction boxes, which we added to the walls at around the same time. After all of that was done we cut the pipes to the correct sizes and pushed them all into place, which was quite satisfying to do because things finally came a bit together. Now at this point I threw all the different kinds of wires we got onto the table 
and we started guiding the correct kinds to the fitting electrical components. And let me tell you, for such a task it is handy to have two person at hand, because wire can be a bit stubborn at times. The main differences between the wires by the way is their cross section, which basically allows more current to flow without heating things up, and the number of single conductors they consist of. For example, a normal outlet is happy with 3 conductors, but for an additional double switch you will need 5, because you are not allowed to switch either the N or PE wire thanks to German electrician rules. But anyway, after all the wires were in place, which also included the wires going in and out of the wall ducts, it was finally time to remove part of the insulation and hook them all up to their electric components. And this wiring of course also included doing all the connections inside the junction boxes with the help of Vago terminals. And as soon as all of that was done, which included finishing up the wall ducts, it was time for the last big task, and that was installing and wiring up the sub distribution box, for which we invested a bit more time to make it all nice and tidy. So after 3 hours this wiring was also done. And sadly, the only way to test everything at this point was using the one phase power I got from the construction site. But as you can see, everything seems to work perfectly fine just the way I hoped it would. And I'm quite pleased with the end result. So now I'm excited to hear what you think about this installation and what you might have done differently. Let me know in the comments. Of course, I also hope you learned a bit about electrical installation through this video. And if so, consider supporting me through Patreon to keep the show going. As always, don't forget to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Stay creative and I will see you next time!